This quick video is to show you how to use kinetic data to create um, time versus concentration, natural log of concentration, or inverse of concentration graphs to figure out the order of a reaction. I've got a really small sample here, um, but even though I've only got a uh, what, five data points, um, this is going to give us the process that we need to figure out our orders. So I've got time and concentration data for a reaction where nitrogen dioxide is our reactant. Um, I've entered my data and made sure that the sig figs match. Um, in this example, I'm going to be using Google Sheets so that you can use your Chromebook to create your graph. Um, one thing I want to show you really quick is how to input your information I'm going to use this just for a second. Let's say I want to re-enter this 0 0.01000 molar enter, or, and then there's my value. What you notice is that Sheets is automatically going to take out those trailing zeros, so we're not going to wind up with the same number of sig figs. So if you want to increase your number of sig figs to match what your data actually reports, we're going to use this increase decimal places button to increase so that our sig figs are going to match. So I'm going to push that three times to make my zeros match. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to show you how to use a formula to do the math that we need to find natural log and inverse of our concentrations. So in any spreadsheet program, in order to pull up a formula, you want to hit the equal sign first. That's going to tell your program that you're going to use a formula. So we want natural log here. So I'm going to just go ahead and type L in. And then the next thing I want to click on is my concentration to, whoa, hold on, maybe I do. All right, let's try again. We want to take natural log of whatever our cell is. Um, if a parentheses doesn't auto populate, go ahead and add that in. And then we're going to use that to go ahead and do our math. Now, here in Google Sheets, you can see that I've got a suggested autofill. If that shows up for you, that's fantastic. We want to go ahead and check autofill. Um, just in case that doesn't, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to show you what to do. This is also a similar thing you can do in Excel to copy your formula. You want to take your cursor and hover over that bottom right-hand corner. If you notice here, I know it's really faint, but there's a crosshairs that shows up. Once you have that crosshair, you can click and drag that box down the rest of the way and so go ahead and copy that formula for you. Now, we're going to also use a formula to calculate the inverse of our concentration. So we want to take our equal sign first, and we're going to take 1 divided by, and here's where we're going to click on our cell. Okay, in this case, we're going to take B2. We can go ahead and put Enter. And then again, we're going to get that suggested autofill. We want to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click check. If you don't get that autofill one more time, you're going to take your crosshairs. Once you cover over that bottom right hand corner of your cell, you're going to click and drag that down to copy your formula. OK, at this point, what we want to do is we want to create three plots, time versus concentration, time versus natural log of concentration, and time versus inverse of concentration. We want to figure out which one of three these three plots are going to give us a linear plot. So what I want to start out with is highlighting, whoops, highlighting our data. Okay. If I'm going to highlight two adjacent sets of data, I can just highlight them both. In Google Sheets, we're going to go to insert chart, and we're going to make a chart with that. Okay. Now it looks like we want to go ahead and click this scatter chart. And we're going to click on the suggested one. I'm going to close this out. Looks like if I can move my sheet here. I'm going to move this to a new tab. We're going to go move to own sheet. And then we can see this here. Now it looks like I have a data point that does not match up. Okay, looks like these two here need an extra zero. Nope, looks like it's this one here. So I can see I had an outlier there. So it looks like I accidentally input an extra zero. We're going to make that switch. And guess what? It's already going to make that change for us. Okay, 
Once we have our scatter plot, we want to go ahead and add a trend line. We're going to go to edit. We're going to go to customize. And then we want to go to series. Okay, once we're in series, I've got this zoomed in pretty big to show you here, but we want to scroll down until we click on trend line. Now, we can see here that this automatically gives us a linear trend line. That doesn't fit our data very well. So we can, to make our trend line fit our data, we can select which one of these is gonna be our best value. I'm just gonna show you kind of what this goes through. Looks like logarithmic is gonna be our best bet, maybe. Eh, maybe polynomial, actually. Okay, so we're gonna go trend line. We wanna go ahead and on this, let's click on R squared so we can see how good our data correlates. So that R squared value, the closer it is to one, the better our data correlates with the trend line we've added. So we can see this is definitely not gonna be a zero order reaction because we don't have a linear trend line for concentration versus time. I'm gonna go ahead and click back to my sheet. And now I wanna do time versus natural log or natural log versus time. So I'm going to select my time data. Whoops. Select that time data. Now, in order to select this natural log of concentration data set, I want to hit control or if you're on a Mac, you're going to hit command and then you can drag and select those two data sets that are not adjacent to one another. This time I'm also going to show you the other way that you can insert your chart. Again, I have this zoomed in quite a bit. So normally if you're not so zoomed in, you would see this symbol on your toolbar and that's the insert chart symbol. Again, here we wanna go to a scatter plot, not a column chart. So we're gonna select scatter plot. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to add this to its own sheet really quick make this nice and big for us to see. Okay, so we take a look at our data. I'm gonna add in my trend line, edit chart, customize. Now we go to series and we scroll, scroll, scroll until we see trend line. And oh, that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that R squared value for that linear trend line. We got 0.98. That looks pretty good. Looks like this might be a first order reaction. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Actually, before I do that, let's see about showing our custom label. Okay, here, instead of this label right here, I'm gonna show you how to add the equation. So we're gonna say use equation, okay? And now notice up here, we can see our equation. That's gonna be helpful because we know that in a natural log versus time equation, we are going to use the slope of our line as equal to our negative rate constant. So here we can see that's that first order graph. Just to show you one more time how to work through this process, let's do inverse of concentration versus time to make sure this is not a second order. So I'm gonna select that time data. I'm gonna hit control, or if you're on a Mac, command to select my second data set, whoops. Close that out. Let's try again. Select my time data. Select my inverse of time data. Insert chart. We want a scatter plot. I don't know why it really wants me to use a column chart. Not very helpful for us. Scatter. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in my trend line series. Trend line. R squared value. Okay. So, ooh, look at that one. Look at how well that correlates. Okay, so let me add this in its own sheet really quick. Move to sheet. Ooh, look how good that one is. So this gives me a perfect correlation. Okay, so my inverse of concentration versus time gives me an R squared value of one. So this turns out that this particular reaction is going to be a second order reaction. We can see that from how well our data set correlates to our linear trend line. So again, this is going to be the way that we use our kinetic data to create a concentration versus time or an inverse of concentration versus time 
whoops, that's a natural log. That one's the inverse of concentration versus time graph to figure out which order our reaction is going to be.